watch him some more sound. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. We got a bike behind me anyway. Hey, my name's Tommy King. This is my 1972 Porsche 911, and you're watching Answered. So the story is, about two years ago, I came up these very roads, Angeles Crest, with a buddy of mine in his 74 Carrera, and it was my first experience in a Porsche. I didn't know much about them, honestly. I had been a avid collector of a lot of American muscle cars, some European stuff, but didn't know much about the air-cooled Porsches. We came up, went up to Newcombs, went back down. I got on Google. I bought a 1985 Carrera the same day. It was a beautiful car. And that started the obsession. And then the more I learned about these cars, the more I learned about the air-cooled Porsches, the more I desired an early long hood car. Time out. Make sure to subscribe for next week's video of Drew and his 997 GT3. Now back to Tommy and his 72. So. I'm a musician, I was on tour, I found this car, it was on an auction platform, I started talking to the buyer, um, a week later the car was on its way to Los Angeles, it showed up a little rough around the edges, it was quite the surprise, um, and that started, fortunately that kind of started my love affair with the car it was bittersweet however i was able to really put this car together the way i wanted to and uh, the way i kind of thought was never really imaginable and i also had that had some help from some good buddies it's a 1972 st spec rally car and it's original color which is signal yellow signal yellow was an aggressive color to me at first but over the last couple months and when I was starting to get to know the ins and outs of the car, I'd come, I'd see this car at the shop or I'd see this car in my garage and I it just grew on me and grew on me and grew on me and now I absolutely love the color. I had never thought in my wildest dreams that Signal Yellow was going to be my favorite Porsche color, but it, it's just, it's, it's amazing. My favorite part of this particular 911 is sort of the sum of all of its parts. Uh, it's the tactical feel. That's a big thing for me personally. Um, it just It's so hands-on. It's so responsive. It's so light and nimble. It's just under 2,100 pounds. Um, the smell, uh, the sound of the sport muffler, it just, it literally activates all of the senses at, at once. I, I don't think I have a least favorite thing. Okay, so starting from the front of the car, like I said, the car's set up to be an ST spec rally car, hence the rally lights. Uh, we have the early style headlight lenses. We've got sevens and eights, Fuchs wheels, and the RS finish. Onto the interior, we have the RS door panels and the RS door pulls. We have the RS floor mats, the Renshift sport shifter, vintage Momo Prototipo steering wheel, single hoop roll bar. So it's pretty period correct in there. Onto the motor. This is a twin-plugged 2.5 MFI motor. It's a high compression motor, 10 to one with G60 cams. Dank sport exhaust, full suspension rebuild. Torsions, control arms, the whole thing's been redone by Tyson Schmidt over at Pro Motorsports.
good. The power just kind of never ends. It it's, really very, dip, right? it's very linear. It's just a, it's a very even power band. Yeah. All the way through the gears. There's no lag. It's such a beautiful setup. I think that's sort of what people really like about these MF5 motors. Is much of a pain as her MF5 fuel injection system, rather as much as a pain as they can be. They figured something out that's really special and just kind of lives this even power all the way throughout the spectrum. Yeah. And what's so special about older Porsches? You know, I didn't fully understand that. I've driven a few new ones. But riding in this, I, there's a ton of sensation that you get that you don't get in new cars. You know, I'm sure you could have bought a newer Porsche for this money, right? And what yeah. makes you decide to go with this? Well, to me, it's the feeling that this car evokes. Um, it's the raw energy. It's the tactical feeling. Like I said earlier, it's the smell. It's the sound. Yeah. It's the connection with the car. And I think that that's something that can't be rivaled with these early Porsches. There's nothing like it. And also, a big part of it for me, the reason why I went this route, is just the communal environment and the camaraderie of a lot of these early Porsche owners. And we have a lot of fun, and we come up here on Fridays, or we drive, we drive on the weekends. Yeah. That's just something really special to me. But you put a lot into this car, not just in terms of the performance and the aesthetics. I know you were going to do a color change originally, actually. Let's talk about that. What color were you going to get? Um, this this car changed into and well, what made you change your mind? When I originally got this car, man, I couldn't stand sitting in yellow. It's just on paper, it had everything that I would have done. The build was right. And so what I was initially going to do is just ship it straight to the paint shop. And I had chosen aquamarine, which was a 356 color. Yeah. I was a, always been a big fan of slate gray. My 85 uh, was black. I think was fitting for that era of that car. Yeah. The, this color uh, does not depict me in the way that I'm a pretty reserved guy. I like black or gray cars. I don't like to be seen. So yeah. my biggest problem is being seen in this signal yellow yeah. Porsche. Yeah. In, in I mean, the sun down the road. In the sun it's down the so road, bright. it's bright. And then you've got, you know, to add on to that, you've got the shell stickers and all the, you know, period correct, correct livery. It's it's a lot. Yeah. I'm not that guy. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted something that was more discreet. Yeah. The thing about Porsche colors is you've got your black and white and grays and the, every shade of, you know, ivory white, such a beautiful color. But you also have what they call the rainbow colors. Yeah. Which are like, I mean, come on, man. There's nothing like them. I mean, their, their color scheme and their spectrum of colors throughout the years is beautiful. So the more events I started going to, the more I started seeing these amazing colors. These blues and orange, signal orange and everything's so cool. This color just started, to, simply, man, just started to grow on me. Yeah. Every day I'd go out to the garage, I'd look at the car, the sun would be hitting it in a different way. Or I'd come up here in the morning when the sun's coming up or I'd be coming down the hill yeah. in the you know, twilight hour where the sun's setting. And it just, it, every time I see this car, I see a different shade of yellow. And sometimes it's a different shade of gold or it's a little more orange or sometimes it seems really orange. I love it, it changes for me every day. Yeah. And it's unique. And I'm glad I didn't paint it too because what I've, what I've been told, signal yellow is a pretty rare color and this was a factory signal yellow car. So yeah. it should stay signal yellow. And it is gorgeous. And let's talk about also the driving experience um, and learning how to handle the car. You know, the cars, do you know how much power it might be putting out? This car is 2,100 pounds and it puts out about 250. Um, at the crank or at the wheels? At the crank. Okay. Which uh, I don't know the math on that. I'm yeah. not sure what that uh, equals at the wheels. But it's enough. Yeah, Could it be more? Enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Do I see all these guys with, you know, four or five? I mean, I heard about this build the other day that was like a 600 horsepower turbo long hood. Uh -huh. It's insane. Um, this is enough power for me. It's enough power to have fun. And it's also enough power for me to keep up with my buddies and also keep up with a lot of later cars. Yeah. It's. It's um, there's a saying. What is it? It's not the, it's not the, it's not the arrow. It's the Indian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Tommy's been fantastic in this car up here. Uh, there are many drivers that have ridden with. Uh, with you, I feel very comfortable.
very safe in this car. Rips to the road and you know even through the passenger seat what's really nice is you can get a lot of the sensations. You know a lot of the vibration of the car, the sound of little pebbles getting picked up and hitting the body. Um, and the yeah. engine when it revs up just sounds so good. Keeps pushing, and the seats are comfy. I mean, these are tight enough to be holding the corners. But yeah, we've been riding around in it for about an hour. It's it's really plush. Definitely, that's what's it, it's the car set up. You know, is sort of a streetable track car. Do some touring, and you know, it's it's a lot of car, but somehow it seems very comfortable, and drivable. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I would necessarily daily drive this car, but as we were saying coming up here, I, mean, I wouldn't hesitate. Get in this car and take a trip up the coast. I, mean, it's, yeah. I don't feel like I'd be having any back pain, or it doesn't seem bumpy, or it's easy to drive. Yeah. Can we get a little downshift, some more sound? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. We got a bike behind me anyway. Thank you very much for taking the time. Absolutely, man. Hopefully a lot of you guys.
guys enjoyed this video um, and enjoyed all the sights and sounds of this beautiful signal yellow uh, 72. <laughs> and make sure to subscribe for next week's video.